Hey there, awesome viewers. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We're thrilled to have you here for our exciting video. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on our future content. We are striving to make your viewing experience the best it can be. So before we dive into today's video, we'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment down below and let us know how you're enjoying the content so far. What can we do to make it even more enjoyable for you? Your feedback means the world to us. Thank you. Andrew and Abby Borden's deaths are undoubtedly two of the most well-known murders in American history. August 4, 1892, for the Borden family, began like any other day. Andrew went into town for some business in the morning, leaving his 32-year-old daughter, a Sunday school teacher Lizzie at home with his wife, Abby, and the family's housekeeper, Bridget Sullivan. Andrew arrived later that day to find his wife had disappeared. Lizzie informed him that Abby had received a note and had gone to see a friend. Abby, on the other hand, had not gone anywhere. She was just upstairs, dead in a pool of her blood, at that specific moment. Lizzie helped her father in relaxing and sleeping on the couch. She tried to persuade Bridget to leave the house by telling her about a nearby department store sale, but Bridget refused. She informed Lizzie she wasn't feeling well. Instead, she walked to her bedroom, sat down, and dozed off. With a fit of yells and shouts, Sullivan's relaxation was cut short. Lizzie screamed that her father had been murdered. Andrew was found dead on the couch, covered in blood, as Sullivan ran out. His face had been severely deformed to the point of being unidentifiable. Lizzie realized in a panic that her stepmother, Abby, should have returned home by now. She requested Sullivan to look upstairs for her. The search, on the other hand, was quick. Sullivan had only made it halfway up the stairs when she discovered her, murdered with a hatchet. Abby had been attacked with a hatchet 19 times, while her husband had been hit 11 times. Lizzie was initially not a suspect, but she was arrested and put on trial for the murders after a friend spotted her burning one of her dresses because it was stained. The charges against Lizzie were eventually dropped by the court. They couldn't believe the female Sunday school teacher could ever be capable of such crimes because there wasn't enough concrete evidence against her, the defense provided witnesses who gave Borden an alibi. Countless possibilities have been suggested as to what might have happened. Some accuse Lizzie Borden, others Sullivan and still others claim that the girls were all involved in the murders. However, the mystery has remained unanswered for over a century. The public was shocked by Kitty Genovese's murder, which took place outside her apartment in front of many of her neighbors. The young woman was brutally murdered while crying for help, and the neighbors who heard her screams did nothing to aid her. The psychologists wondered how could someone observe an attack or observe a crime taking place and do nothing. The phrase, bystander effect, was coined by psychologists, and it now appears in almost every psychology textbook. On March 13, 1964, Kitty Genovese drove home to her apartment in Kew Gardens around 2.30 a.m. from the bar she worked at in Hollis, Queens. She didn't notice the automobile that followed her all the way home from a nearby parking lot. Genovese parked her car at the train station and began walking 100 feet to her apartment complex. That's when Winston Mosley attacked her. As he stabbed her, Genovese screamed. Her shouts for aid were loud enough to arouse her neighbors at 3.15 a.m. However, none of them rushed to her rescue. One man shouted, leave that girl alone. It was enough to scare Mosley away, but even with him gone, nobody helped Genovese back to her feet. For ten minutes, she crawled across the ground, slowly bleeding out, no one helping her. 
and then Mosley came back her and then fled. Neighbors didn't notify the cops until after 4 a.m., over an hour after she was assaulted. It was too late by then. Genovese had already passed away. A few witnesses said that they dialed 911 but that their calls were not prioritized. Others simply said that they presumed someone else would have done it instead. The behavior of Genovese's neighbors cost the young woman her life. Although the case was solved, how it was solved remains a mystery. A Chicago respiratory therapist was murdered in her residence in 1977. Teresita Bassa was discovered with a butcher knife buried in her chest under a blazing mattress. Police tried to locate her stolen jewelry but were not successful. They were also unable to connect any of the suspects to the crime. It appeared hard to discover the offender until Remy Chua, a co-worker who hardly knew the victim, became an unexpected source of information. Chua began to have images and dreams about Bassa regularly. It all started in her workplace's locker room, where she saw a man's face behind Bassa. This would happen again and again in her dreams. Chua then began communicating with her husband while channeling Bassa's spirit. Chua told her husband the entire story of Bassa's murder while channeling Bassa's spirit. She alleged that an elderly person at the hospital called Alan Showery molested her while assisting Bassa with her television. He then murdered her and set fire to her mattress. Showery's common-law wife received her jewelry, and the spirit was able to provide specifics about what happened to it. Mr. Chua persuaded his wife to share these things with the police. The police were initially doubtful, but after seeing Bassa's jewelry on Showery's wife, which Bassa's cousin was able to confirm precisely as the spirit claimed she could, the guy was found guilty and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Unfortunately, the evidence was insufficient to convict him any longer. Was it, however, Bassa's ghost that identified her assailant? Maybe Chua knew something about the case and hid it behind the guise of a spirit controlling her. What brought authorities to the murderer is still a mystery. If you liked the video, don't refrain from liking and subscribing to our channel, do make sure to turn on the bell notification to not miss out on our future content. Thank you and make sure to check out our other videos.